Welcome, everyone. This is Mr. Simone uh, without a mask on, uh, your teacher this year at Florida Park Memorial for AP United States History. And as I said, we're going to do a brief overview, the big picture for each of the key time periods in the AP U.S. History exam. So we'll just cover it very, very quickly, but it'll give you a good foundation to work off of throughout the year. So let's get started. The first event for 1754 to 1800 is the French and Indian War, and this is from 1754 to 1763. It's a war that pits the French and most of the Native Americans against the British and the North American colonists. Um, in Europe, the French and the British are fighting against each other as well. They call that the Seven Years' War. It began in 1756. The war is a key turning point in the relationship between the British colonists and the British government, because as they were trying to um, encourage Americans to enlist, uh, William Pitt made a promise that he said, if you guys volunteer, we will take care of the costs of the war. But when the war was over, they did not follow through on that promise. So what happens is, as I said, this becomes a key turning point in their relationship, and now tensions are going to mount between the British and the North American colonists. And that will lead to the era that we call the causes of the American Revolution. So from 1763 to 1775, there are going to be a series of acts by Parliament. There's going to be incidents like the Boston Massacre and the Boston Tea Party, and there's going to be you know, other movements that take place that really build up the tension that will eventually culminate in the revolution, but not just yet. Um, and please be aware that there are both political and economic and social reasons for why the Americans decided to revolt. Their slogan, no taxation without representation, is only one component of the reasons. And when we learn about this, we're gonna really delve into well, was it more of a political cause? Was it more of an economic cause? You know, what really was the motivation for why the colonists revolted? Now, still before the revolution, there is an, uh, an armed attack. So the Battle of Lexington and Concord in 1775, which people call the shot heard around the world, um, is really like the first, I mean, there's violence before this, but it's the first major confrontation between British and colonial soldiers. But again, still no revolution. Uh, and people refer to it as a shot heard around the world. I've shown my age. So many of you have never even heard of Schoolhouse Rocks, um, but I'll have to maybe show the cl quick clip in class. Now, it's 1776 when Thomas Jefferson finishes working on the Declaration of Independence. So at that point, um, he was really, and many of the colonists were inspired by a pamphlet called Common Sense. So Thomas Paine, a, a British immigrant, wrote this pamphlet arguing that there's no reason why you should allow a country that's an ocean away to rule you. So the combination of that doc, that pamphlet, and the, the, the spirit of, of revolution within the colonists is what led them to eventually declare independence. And this is just one short excerpt. You'll be reading this in its entirety um, later on in English class. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. And this is where we get the phrase life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Again, at this point, Parliament and the British government could have said, good luck, you'll be back, just you wait. But that did not happen, and that is why the Revolutionary War was fought. So the American Revolution is from 1776 until 1783. Now, once the revolution is over, a new government is needed. The American colonists were victorious and they were already starting to develop this new government um, called the Articles of Confederation. So it'll go into effect officially when the Treaty of Paris is signed, but the Articles of Confederation is a document that is primarily focused on states' rights. Some people really call it just like a firm league of friendship. Uh, so the 13 individual states, most of the power resided with them. But this is our first form of government. It fails. Remember, I'm just doing the big picture here. You will learn all about the Articles of Confederation later on. But when the Articles of Confederation, when they decide that it's time for this to, to be scrapped, I guess they had an option. They could have tried to fix the Articles or just start over. 
And they went with the start over option. And that's why we have a constitution. So for, for 1787 to 1789, that's when the leading 55, you know, white landowning men in America met in Philadelphia. And they came up with the new form of government that we still have today. Granted, we've made changes to it. Granted, we interpret it differently. But it's still the same document that we're using today, the Constitution. And the Constitution, you know, many people call it a bundle of compromises. You will learn about those compromises in class as well. But like I said, it's been our guiding document for over 230 years. And the first two presidents, uh, I I did skip the Articles Federation. Remember in class, we talked about that being John Hansen, the unofficial first president. If you're watching this from another class, just type in first president of the United States. Second option will be John Hansen. But our first two presidents are George Washington and John Adams, and they will be presidents at the time that's called the Early Republic. Uh, and we will also learn about the financial plan of Alexander Hamilton as well during this time period. So I hope that that helped everyone as a good little overview, brief overview for time period three. And I look forward to seeing you for time period four tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Good luck.